So uh, we have ear selected here. And to actually order the sections, we go to Edit Fill Lore. Right now, that is set to automatic. Now you notice you have a bunch of sections. Um, and we're going to order these sections. You notice that each section uh, stitches out and this jumps to each one. It's in this particular order now. And we're going to change that. So it's kind of like solving a puzzle. Um, you kind of start from one end of the object and work your way across. And it's kind of fun. I find that it's kind of challenging, but uh, it's also fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the menu into manual mode. And we're going to look at the object and figure out how we want to map this out. So we're going to start with section 9. Probably going to do section 3 and 4, section 1, section 0, section 2, etc. So <clears throat> I'm going to start out at the beginning. And I'm going to take section 9 and move it up in the list. Now nothing happens while you're moving it up in the list. It's not until you hit update that it actually updates. Um, updates can kind of take a little while. And if we had to do each one of these, uh, it just would be slower, so we just have to remember that to hit update. So we're going to do 9, 4, 3, 1, then 0, then 2, and then when we get here, we'll just continue. We're just going to start with this, so we're going to say update. Now you notice that um, the graphic turns blue because one's the last one we're on. It'll turn blue or cyan, the things that... Um, are before the particular item that's selected. So we're going to go back to 9 as our first item. Now you notice 9, uh, I'm going to zoom in here, 9 has a starting point and an ending point. And you notice that we actually just stitch it this direction. Um, we can't stitch up there. We're going to get into a hole or a corner and we won't be able to get out. So we're going to actually start with start here. And the way you change that is there's a fill direction button. And right now it's going forward, which is this way. We're just going to press the button and it's going to reverse. And you notice that now start is here and end is here. Now another thing that's interesting is you also notice that start and end are on each side. Um, basically it stitches in even odd orders, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. In this case we must have the same number <clears throat> of odds uh, or evens so it comes comes to the end. That's not necessarily the case for every section. Uh, if you notice on section one we have an end here and a start there so that must be um, a no, that must be odd number of sections but here we have an even number of sections I guess. Anyway um, so we start at the S button and then we end at E. Now you notice E jumps over to section four start which basically um, we don't want section 4 to stitch that way either, so we're going to reverse it. And you notice now, um, and this is just a luck of the draw, it's the start position and the end position are the same place. So we don't have to do anything here. It just basically works nicely, just goes right to that next section. So at the end of 4, you notice that 4 goes to the start of 3, and we want to reverse 3 also, and you notice that it will jump all the way across here to here. We don't want that, actually we want to um, give it some directions. So if we click on 3, you'll notice that what we've already done is turn blue, and we can add a path to show how to get there. So we're going to click Add, and we're just going to click along until we get to the starting position of Section 3. Now, now you notice the, the line now has a direction, and so um, it's not going to cross over there. It is actually is really kind of fun, for me at least, um, to figure out how to do this because you can make the stitch exactly like you like. Um, it's, you know, I mean, a lot of our hobby is making sure we, you know, sew things together properly with piecing quilts and things. Um, so this is kind of just us doing it on the computer, making sure it stitches out exactly the way we want. Um, there is no algorithm that is just doing it for us. Um, that would be nice. I don't have uh, that algorithm. Um, but this... Um, gives you total power. So you notice we're going from start to end here and the next one is one which one should be reversed as well. And you notice that end and start are on this side. Now we, what we could do is we could reverse both of these 
so that the end's on this side. So the way we do that is to start in direction, we can press the button here, and now you notice that the end goes over here. Now we kind of messed up our start path here, but we can redo that. Um, and then we want to reverse the start end direction for section one. So we press that there. Now these two are together. And we have to redo this path because you've got a long jump strip there. We don't really want to. So we're just going to simply go back to three and say delete and then add again. So now we have um, section 9, 4, 3, and 1 perfectly stitched. And you notice now section 1, the end there is perfect because it's perfectly in line with this. It doesn't have to be. Um, but we want to put a start path here because we don't want just a long stitch here. I think in the future, if um, I might change the program so it automatically stitches this. If it crosses the object and not into space, um, it totally is fine. Um, but I don't have that feature yet. So we're just going to draw a start path for that. So for section zero, we're going to add a start path. I'm just going to go from end to start. And now that has a start path. Now you notice the luck of the draw is section two, the end path of section zero and the start path of section two are perfectly in the right spot. So we don't actually have to do anything for those. So um, I'm going to stop the video now so that I can continue.